and welcome to this week's Rocksmith Developer Stream. I am your host and the community developer for Rocksmith, Doug Billy. I welcome you all and I thank you for joining us here today. Uh, really cool pack today. We've got uh, the Blues Song Pack 3. Uh, we're going to take a look at that right now. When we come back, we're going to play through those songs plus one extra. Uh, we're going to give away some prizes throughout the stream, so make sure you uh, keep an eye and an ear out for that. Uh, and if you have questions, make sure you reach out to UB Jurassic. Uh, that is Brian Turner. He's our community manager based in North Carolina. Uh, and he'll take those questions and send them on our way so we can answer some of them throughout the stream. Uh, and at the end of the stream, uh, I'm going to have some news about uh, the upcoming streams now that we're hitting that time of the season. So uh, right now, let's take a look at Blues Song Pack 3. And there you have it, uh, three songs, uh, three blues hits from the 60s and 70s. Uh, we are here right now today live uh, from Ubisoft San Francisco. Uh, and I would like to now introduce our first couple of guests. Uh, hello, first couple of guests. Hi. Hello. Hi, Brian Shu. Yeah. Welcome. Thanks. You're welcome. Amy <laughs> Batista, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. How are you doing? I see that you have a six string. I do. What's up? So you're playing rhythm today? I am playing rhythm um, today. So Going Down by Freddie King is the first track that we're going to cover. Uh, so you know tracks this one, Brian? Yes, I did. I think Sam helped with the transcription as okay. well. Cool, cool. Uh, what can we look forward to today on the lead path? Um, lot, lots of bending. Um, like, you could really hear where Stevie Ray Vaughan got, got a lot of his Hold. stuff from. Okay. Um, yeah, in the lead chart, there's a ton of bending. Um, in the rhythm guitar chart, it's mostly... Um, straight like 
uh, sixteenth just, notes. Just keeping the keeping the yeah, keeping the rhythm. It's a wrist holding it down. Wrist holding it down. <laughs> so <we're> going to <laughs> uh, what made you decide to go with rhythm today instead of bass? Because you're usually you're usually yeah. Anthony a, a mentioned to check out the rhythm section of okay. the song, so I went and tried it out. And so on Anthony's like, recommendation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I was like, cool. all right, I can all right. play this. And she got a new guitar. And you I got, got a new you guitar. Just, yeah, she bought yeah. it from Dan. Guess what color it is? It's Dan blue. Dan blue. Um, so how you like it so far? That's pretty nice. So this is uh, which which version is this? This is the uh, s- the Sterling uh, Saint Vincent. Cool. Yeah. I forget the the last two simples for it, but it's a it's a really nice replica of the of the Musician Man version. Cool, cool. Yeah, I've uh, th- they're they're also pretty. I haven't heard this one yet, so I'm looking forward to yeah, seeing how it sounds. It's nice. Uh, Brian Chu. Yeah. Uh, I, I think you're 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 known for being the sort of the the, the jazz guy, though you, dis- you you seem to dispute that on occasion. Yeah, I mean, how how sort of school? Just because <laughs> I play weird <laughs> scales, because <laughs> like you're the one who can weird can do chords. This. Um, are, are how <laughs> studied are you in blues and blues playing? Very much so. I love the blues. Um, I mean, it's definitely a style of music I didn't get into until a little later. Yeah, because I was, you know, when I grew up, it was all rock and metal, and then I got into shred. Um, but you know, all all of this rock music, uh, jazz, it all comes from the blues. Yeah, like yeah. Most of Western American music. What you just described, kind of coming into the blues a little bit later, I feel like that's pretty common. I think that's like that happened with me mm-hmm. to an extent. It wasn't until my my thirties where I really started kind of paying attention. Like yeah. I knew I knew I was into kind of blues based uh, music, mm-hmm. but I didn't really kind of dive in until until just a few years ago. Right. Um, and and yeah, it's be and it's because you can you can see the sort of building blocks of yeah. where we are now. And like with with blues, you can um, like in other styles of music, like metal and and jazz. A lot of the times, it's it's as many notes as you can fit into a bar. Or something. <laughs> right. Right. Well, with blues, you have to be so deliberate with what you play, and I. I was playing a lot of funk music, yeah, and a lot of that music kind of calls for more kind of bluesy <laughs> kind of style of soloing, and so I I went kind of backwards and started studying studying a lot of blues, and plus like, um, I don't know, there's just some kind of finesse you learned from right. studying it, right? And uh, a lot of a lot of people talk about like feel about blues has blues is much very much based on sort of. Yeah, um, it's a it's a very much a like. Uh, I think I think the tradition is mostly passed orally. Like okay. like, there's not much of a um, contemporary like academic way of approaching blues like right. other styles of music. Okay, w- classical jazz and stuff like that. Do you think feel and uh, w- when I say feel, can you sort of describe what I mean by that? Feel. Yeah. Um, when in, in in relation to blues music in relation to blues it's kind of hard to explain i guess it's um it's a lot of subtle things it's like um timing mm-hmm. uh melodicism your your the way that you where you place notes how you're placing them um there's a lot of things uh so for guitar um we can kind of try to hyper analyze things that are going on in, in yeah. this solo, right? Yeah. Um, so when you're kind of learning how to play a style, especially something like blues, um, kind of pay attention to things like, where is he placing the vibrato? Like, how is he placing his 16th notes or the some of the faster passages versus the smaller or slower passages? Yeah. Where is he leaving space? Um, where is it, yeah. Uh, vibrato is a really big one. Where and how is he bending? Is he doing micro bending? Is he bending right. full steps? Because there's a lot of, a lot of nuance to, like, even even if he's just playing three notes, right? There there can be a lot of variance in in how he's approaching those three notes, and you kind of want to <laughs> go go away into the nitty gritty to right. kind of get that feel right. Because even though it's three notes, he might be playing those three notes over and over again. There's it's hard to get right. Yeah, it's very difficult to get right. Okay, so uh, so exposure, kind of study, I guess, just repeated looking. Just listening to it, yeah. You you want to be listening to 
it over and over again. Cool. I don't, I don't, I don't, it's hard. It's hard to describe yeah. feel. <laughs> I, 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 just, I just put you on. The, like we didn't talk about this question beforehand. I just yeah. uh, kind of put you on the spot. Uh, I'm not sorry. That was a great answer. Yeah, Thank you very much, I Brian. Chu. I don't know what I'm uh, saying. All right, we can go into a little bit more, like how to make your. Uh, I have a few things on on like blues playing. Maybe after we sure sure. Well, let's let's go track. take a look. Uh, this is sure. going down by the King, uh, Freddie King, uh, right now. And again, if you have questions, <laughs> reach out to you. Be Jurassic in the chat. <laughs> Trying to get used, to, <laughs> trying to get used to where all the little fast, yeah. fast bits are. They're almost like punctuation. Yeah, yeah. Keep going. Go. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah, alternating uh, between sort of very, very clipped, uh, very uh, like I said, almost like punctuation mm -hmm. in that call and response to yeah. more uh, legato uh, long notes. And yeah. I've, I've been a little and bit sick, by the way, so I apologize if I'm a little bit hard to hear. I'll try to speak up. Uh, what? More than <laughs> more than usual. Yeah. I'll do my best. <laughs> so so the I'll just yell at Brian. So the trick. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So the tricky Sorry. thing about this song, obviously, is like the various different rhythms, like between the every little lick in yeah. there it's like hard to unless you really know the song well it's yeah. hard to just like sight read right away so <laughs> i would take a couple of passes like just listening to it and getting used to you know how how it sounds and then try try approaching it like one small section at a time before yeah. attempting to nail the whole thing so you can see i didn't really nail the whole thing because i don't know the song <laughs> very well but um yeah some takeaways from this entire pack like so for that song um i can if oh i may please, give a please. mini lesson Absolutely. right here please so do. i was talking about um vibrato placement and one of the biggest things to um get good at if you want to get good at blues or just you know soloing in general is 
when you use vibrato. Because there's a lot of guys who just kind of have an automatic trigger finger when it comes to putting vibrato on their notes. Yeah. Which the difference between a really seasoned guitar player is like they know when to let notes just be pure. So when when you listen to that one section where he was just doing all these Yeah. You know. So he's, he's using the vibrato as as sort of a, an accent. Mhm. Um I, you know, you, you you don't hear singers you you want to approach it like a singer, right? You don't hear singers like <laughs> Like that does just that's not very musical. <laughs> it's almost like you're in like uh, underwater, like, uh, yeah. there's like like an effect, like some sort <laughs> right. of uh, like flanger type thing. Going right. On. So with just those three notes, um, you can have a lot of variance and be really, really expressive. And then also, though, with those three notes, you can do a lot of different kinds of bending. Like the top two notes, you could bend. You can kind of overbend for like an exaggerated effect. Sure. <laughs> Or like even do a micro bend like right here. That's like not a full full half step. Yeah. But you kind of get this nice little, you like know, it, it, it subtle. Sort of, it puts you in. It sends you in that direction, but yeah, sort of pulls. Yeah, the yeah, and you can do this with a, your normal box shape. And I would even practice doing stuff like that, like do kind of chromatic bends down sure. just so you can get kind of the whole flavor of the pentatonic scale. That sounds yeah. great. Yeah, yeah. Sounds cool. <laughs> so, yeah, mess around with that kind of cool, stuff. Cool. You'll sound good. <laughs> Thank you very much, Brian. All, All right. right. Emmy, how did that rhythm part treat you? Pretty good, but my thing almost cramped up. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we made it through. Uh, thank you, Amy. Thank you, Brian. Uh, yeah. Right now, we're going to give away our first Ernie Ball prize pack of the stream. So if you'll please listen to UB Jurassic in the chat, he will be your guide. He will be your instructor on how you can win this Ernie Ball prize pack. If you win, you're going to get everything you see on the screen right now. You're going to get the two sets of strings from Ernie Ball, uh, a six-string set and a four-string set for your bass. Those are both uh, regular slinky sets for their respective instruments. You're going to get a dozen Ernie Ball picks. Uh, I believe these are a medium to medium heavy gauge currently. Uh, you're also going to get three picks from us here at uh, uh, Ubisoft San Francisco, uh, the Rocksmith team. Those are the Spectrum Plectrum picks uh, named by you. Um, I think there were, there were a couple of you in the chat uh, who put that together. Um, and you're going to get a bright red uh, guitar strap from Ernie Ball, a set of Ernie Ball Wonder Wipes to keep your guitar's body, neck, and strings lasting longer, looking nicer. I'm not sure about smelling better. I don't know if it'll make your guitar smell better. If you have a stinky guitar, you should get it checked out. Because that's weird. Uh, you're also going to get a peg winder uh, from, from Ernie Ball. Uh, so please listen to what UB Jurassic is saying in the uh, chat. You must be uh, st following this channel uh, at Rocksmith Game here on Twitch in order to win. Uh, and if you win, he will reach out to you uh, via Whisper. That's UB Jurassic. He'll reach out to you and get your name, your shipping address, and uh, your telephone number. We need all that information in order to ship your prizes to you and nothing else. Uh, once we ship the prizes, uh, we're done. We're done with that information and we relieve ourselves of it. Uh, no, no funny business with that information. Uh, so please listen to what UB Jurassic is saying in the chat. Uh, and if you are outside of the U.S., uh, as, I, as I always say, uh, please break up your address line by line uh, to make it easier for silly old me to get it right. Uh, so thank you for entering, and good luck to all of our uh, con contestants there. Um, and uh, we're about ready. We're almost ready. We're about 95% of the way ready to sing hello to our next set of guests. Uh, so why don't we now turn to my left, Greg Studley. I don't know if you're on camera yet. There you are. Uh, Greg Studley. Nice. <laughs> How's it going? I'm good. You're good. I'm glad you're good. Uh, David Stevens is there beside Hi. me. Hi. Hello, are. David. I'm still uh, breaking things on the... Oh, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> well, that's, that's your job. <laughs> um, it's okay now. And Greg Studley, you are a, a note tracker here. You note tracked, in fact, uh, I read this track that we're about to play. I did. Uh, which uh, is, oh, the Shuggy Otis. Booty cooler. Booty cooler. Booty cooler. And no, I don't know what it means. <laughs> okay, that was my first question. I'm glad. Uh, <laughs> Before I'm glad you, you even do. go there, I have <laughs> I no idea I what this song is actually about. I, did, I didn't know if that was part of your research. 
in this one? Uh, no, I, I watched a couple live videos, but he, he never really... Uh, he never went to the mic and said, so a lot of people ask me, <laughs> what, <laughs> what, is, what is this song all about? Yeah, I, I never uh, didn't catch that it's video. It's a mystery for the ages. Mm-hmm. Unle- well, I, I mean, it might be around. We just haven't looked. I think it's more fun being a mystery. I honestly didn't look, but now I'm going to. And somebody, somebody, s- somebody suggested that because of the IE, uh, the booties refer to shoes, like that, booty boots. That seems reasonable. Yeah, yeah. Like so booties, it's like, like little tiny shoes. Ma- it's, it's like, like shoe like refrigerator. Scuttlebutt. scuttlebutt. Yeah, scuttlebutt's yeah. a fun word. Scuttlebutt. Oh, yeah. scuttlebutt. Scuttlebutt. Yeah. Yeah, Stevie Ray Vaughan. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, or also just telling gossip and rumors. Right. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this track in particular uh, is part of the part of the blues three song pack, uh, but it's sort of a psychedelic blues. It's it's like a funky blues. Yeah, it's got some funk, got some 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 of that like 60s, 70s psychedelia. Uh, what, how how is it different from your sort of standard uh, workaday blues song? The workaday blues. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, well, it's, it's, a, it's a subgenre. Sure. So so it's funny because there's no um, there's no what we would refer to as a head in this song. The head being like the main melody of the song. Okay. So there's not really a main melody. It's just kind of like. A jam all the way through. Okay. Uh, you know, it starts off with just like the rhythm section, kind of creating a groove. There's a guitar solo, yeah. which which you think is then the head, but but normally when we talk about the song having a head or or a you know melody, it, it comes back to it at right. some point. Right. But it never really does. So then it goes <laughs> to an organ solo, and then there's another you know guitar solo at the end, but it never really revisits like that main idea. So it it just sounds like a a really you know well orchestrated jam. Okay. That so just comes together and there's a great little organ path in the middle and it's it's fun. So the the only the only similarities between the the different uh, gu- guitar parts throughout the song are that they're laid on top of the same groove. Oh, it's groovy. All right, David Stevens, how's that bass part? Groovy, groovy. groovy? Okay, <laughs> well, well, I, <laughs> no, I yeah, guess we're, we're all agreed. Song. Super uh, fun. Let's <laughs> uh, let's go improve it. Uh, this is Booty Cooler by Shuggy Otis. Uh, again, if you have any more questions, reach Shug- out to us in the chat. Uh, you'll be Jurassic. That's bass. Stevens on the bass. Nice. The bass is on me. It's true. Yes, it is. It's true. Almost like a like a southern rock sound. We have the uh, the, the G and the E string together. Oh, and you have those sixths. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's such a good sound. 
Oh yeah, and and yeah. it's it's used. Uh, there are a lot of times you can use that actually, not only just in soloing, but it's actually a really good thing to use in fills. Okay. Um, you'd use it a little differently if you wanted to. Uh, so uh, for like rhythm blues playing, this is actually a really good track because it doesn't use what people would call the traditional chords. Like if if normally you ask a guitarist, hey, play me a C seven. Yeah. The go tos are this shape here at the third fret. Which does have a sound. I, I sure, assure you, sure, there sure. is there is tone we can, to this. We can pretend. We can imagine. Yeah, I mean, I you, think can you hear if this we, if in we my head? Oh, I, I thought oh, we. I, thought I, we had I know. <laughs> oh, and it's yeah. not always as distorted when you imagine it in your head. Um, or this one, right? These are the big yeah. two go tos. These bar chords, but this song never uses them. Really. So we've got this, which is actually a C seven shape that then moves around the neck. Yeah. Which is a really it's good one, one to know for chords. blues. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a great shape. It's not actually that hard to play, and there's no bar in it. So for a lot of people, it's actually easier than a bar chord. Right. Um, but then halfway through the organ solo, uh, when the chord progression cycles again, it turns into ninth chords. So it, it kind of shows you how you can take your blues comping, meaning your yeah. chord playing, and kind of make it become more or less intense as the song needs. Interesting. So even just varying your chords is a very cool concept um, to do. Actually, in, in the chat, uh, not too long, w towards the end of the song, uh, Francois Lewong, wherever he is, was asking uh, for more information oh about those uh, the seven and the nine chords. Oh, yeah. They're, so they're great ones to know. This is, this is a great ninth chord shape. There are a bunch of them. This but is another see, good you one. See, yeah. You see that, that, was that the seven or the nine? That one. This is the ninth chord. That's the ninth. So yeah, I, I don't see that often. I see it occasionally, and it always kind of sticks out because it's, it's so different. It's almost inverted from... It's what it, you would normally have. This is kind of getting into the range of what people play when they play jazz. This sure. is a very common jazz chord for like a ninth chord voicing. Um, but for blues, it, it kind of takes blues to like that higher level of, of blues playing where you're yeah. able to kind of go, oh, I'm going to throw in a ninth chord instead of just sevens the entire time. Right. And it, it really does enhance the sound of the song when you can do that as a rhythm player. And aside from that, I mean, in lead playing, like you were talking about these, these intervals, one of the best you can do, like in the key of C, uh, and he doesn't do it in this song, but it's a really useful one, is if you're on the same fret on both the G string and the E is, which you may have heard as that, or as, which both of those are cool. Yeah, and you can do it on, on this set of string as well. So when you, when you do that, uh, when, you're, when you're skipping the string, uh, you're typically just muting the, the, the skipped string. It's it's one option. Uh, you can mute it, or you can use uh, as I would normally do is oh, you a do pick hybrid with a finger. So okay. yeah, hybrid picking. So it doesn't really matter whether I'm muting it or not. If you're going to sure. strum it, you definitely want to mute it, and so then which, it'll work out. Which best. did you use in Booty Cooler? Uh, definitely hybrid. Yeah, hybrid. Okay. Yeah, I got so comfortable with hybrid picking. I just oh, just good. do it. <laughs> cool, cool. Um, oh, I have uh, some more, some more. Um, how do you get a nine? This is from Mad Al. Hey, Mad how do you get a nine when there's only seven notes in a scale? Oh, that's actually a really good question. This is much better <laughs> than the tone wood question <laughs> from last week. I just want to point that out. Um, for all any of you that were watching, you remember how awkward that was. Yeah. Um, no more awkward. So, uh, so this is how you create a nine chord. Two of <laughs> so uh, to create a nine, we'll kind of build it from the basic building blocks of a chord. So uh, when you talk about a major or a minor chord, you're talking about a triad, which uses the one, three, and five of a scale played at the same time, and that becomes a major chord or uh, potentially a minor chord if you alter the third. If you want to create a seventh chord, you add an additional note being the seventh note of the scale. And it happens that in a regular seventh chord, which you would call like a C7, yeah. uh, is more accurately called a dominant seventh chord because it doesn't actually use the seventh note. It uses the seventh note made flat. Right. So it's a little bit of, a, of an alteration. It's just that thing you have to kind of put in your head as a truth that when you see C7, it means C with a flat seven. So to get past that point, when we talk about nines, the ninth note of the, s of the scale is actually the same note as the second note of the scale. Yeah. So if you include root, third, fifth, seventh, and then add the second note of the scale or the ninth note of the scale, because it happens to be the exact same note, mm -hmm. so in the key of C, that would happen to be the note D, then that note acts as a ninth. And the reason we call it a not a second but a ninth is when you include a seventh, those notes start to be kind of thought of as a higher register note. Right. 
Rather than it being a two, away. you start thinking of it more as a nine. There's still some dissonance there, but it's it's much more sort of digestible with the the difference in frequencies. Yeah. So you wouldn't use a lot of like major seconds, say, because they're too close and they're going to clash well, a bit more. Well, remember, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that that note is in a particular octave. It's, it's just true, how true. you're naming the note within the context of a scale of a chord name. Yeah. So that note could exist at any point within Way the above. chord. It could be a, in the lower octave, and you could still call it a C9. Okay. Yeah, the, the positioning doesn't necessarily determine the name. I did not know that. Uh, but you, you typically would hear that sort of like octave and a bit. More often you're going to find it as a higher tone. Yes, okay. but it, it's not. I wouldn't call it like a requirement. Okay. Cool. Uh, that's helpful. I um, uh, also have a question uh, from Burn1211. One, one. Uh, how uh, do you mute the E on the C7 shape? Yes. Uh, well, so it depends which E. Oh. Well, actually, okay. actually, I don't think it does depend which E. No, I think about <laughs> it. Because w when this becomes, so uh, we'll talk about it in its original form, being an actual C7 chord. Uh, in the shape of a C7 chord, I will normally mute the low E string with my third finger here. So... That way, if I do happen to play that with yeah. a lot of distortion, you still hear it. But without <laughs> it, 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 it mutes, yeah, it gets nice yeah, and quiet. Um, once that becomes a movable shape, though, wow, that was oh. great. That was, <laughs> that was, that was, that was nice. Yeah. Um, you're actually going to want to mute both of your E strings. So your third finger can mute your low E. Your first finger oh, can yeah. mute your high E. So it can. And therefore, you can strum all six strings, and you're only going to hear four. It's it's just like a safety net. Yeah. It's almost I'm I'm not suggesting you should try and hit all the strings when you only are playing four of them. Right. But uh, certainly, if you did hit those extra notes, you don't want them ringing out. Like if you're playing this F7 chord and you have a bunch of E's ringing out, that's going to be yes, pretty <laughs> rough. You're, you're not yeah. you're going to be asked to not come back to the blues jam. <laughs> so I would definitely you're, suggest you're muting actually those a little notes. too blue. <laughs> and actually, similarly on the on the ninth chord. Yeah. Do the same thing. Use your finger here, your second finger, to mute the low E string. Anytime you can mute strings that you're not playing, anytime you can mute them out, it's just a safety yeah. for you. And if you play that string, you're covered, and you're not going to hear anything. If you don't play it, then it doesn't really matter. But if for some reason you hit that string and you're not muting it, you, you could potentially get a pretty raunchy note. I'm not even going to call it bluesy. <laughs> I'm going to call it outright <laughs> raunchy. Dirty. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, I think that's... Uh, oh, uh, one more uh, for you. Jean 3 asks, how is a seven chord different from a major seven chord? Oh, okay. So this actually ties in with the little kind of feature that I was talking about, which is if you call a chord a seven, it actually implies that there's a flat seven. Why is that? Is there? Do you know of a reason for that? Uh, I would have to just say over th over the years that has just developed as being a, a truth of it. Okay. Um, there there probably Maybe is some historical thing, but you know, look, music history was. <laughs> okay. As you can tell, music theory was, but music history it, it was eight thirty in the morning. <laughs> I mean, you can't expect much of me at eight thirty in the morning. Just ask these guys. Um, can't expect much from me now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you like how I almost delivered that? Yeah. <laughs> but I, but I you can't much me now. Yeah. 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 Ugh. What was the question? Oh, oh yeah, no, no. major seven. <laughs> uh, a major seventh chord, however, yeah. has just the seventh note of the major scale, and that's how you can remember it. So therefore, the note is not altered in any way. So major seven has seventh note of the major scale. Uh, a seven has the seventh note of the major scale made flat. Yeah, and that uh, the major the major seventh is going to be uh, half step away. If it's if it's being played just in just one octave, it's a half step below. The root octave. The root octave. Yes, yeah. that is correct. Okay. Cool. So it's it cool. you could almost say it, it in some respects it's more of a dissonant chord because it could have that half step. Mm -hmm. In other respects, it's not as dissonant because the that other chord has a tritone. Oh yeah. Meaning yeah. half of an octave. So a tritone is considered to be one of those very dissonant intervals yeah. when played all by itself. But when played in context of a chord, it hides the dissonance. And that's part of what blues is, is that dissonance. I like how when you start playing tritones you don't have distortion. I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, David, see, oh, <laughs> asking he shall receive. All right, all right. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there it is for um, you. So uh, yeah, that that groove looked fun. Oh yeah, yeah. Just, I mean, is there more to it than it just? It's it's a fun. Uh, no, I mean, yeah, it, it lives in the scale box for the most part, um, and it just locks in with the drums. Cool. Sits in the pocket. Sounds good. All right. Well, is uh, it the left or the right pocket? Back pocket. That's oh, nice. Shirt pocket. The shirt it. pocket. 
I have been keeping my phone in my shirt pocket <laughs> because I'm a dork. <laughs> <laughs> in Bluetooth headphones. You're a dork and you are Bluetooth headphones? I am both. I am all I learned so much more. about you every yeah, day. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a multifaceted <laughs> individual. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, David, for joining us. Uh, right now, uh, we're going to do two things. Uh, first, uh, we're going to play a video. Uh, this is going to be a look at the 60-day challenge, uh, which you'll, you'll learn all about the, the idea behind the 60-day challenge during this video. I believe Jamie is the, uh, the subject of this video. While that's going on, uh-oh, I'm getting looks. That I might be wrong. Oh, no, it's a, it's a nod. Okay, we're good. Uh, while that's going on, we're going to give away five copies of this week's song pack, the Blues Song Pack 3 for Steam. Uh, we're going to give five codes in the chat, so please listen uh, once more to what Yubi Jurassic is saying in the chat. Follow those instructions for your chance to win one of five of those codes. Uh, please enjoy the video, and we'll be back with more music right after that. My name is Jamie Bell, and I'm 25 years old. I'm from Maryland, in about 20, 30 minutes north of Washington, D.C. I have picked up and tried to play so many musical instruments in my life. Piano classes, trombone, ocarina. I first got interested in learning the guitar from comedy guitarists. So I would probably want to follow in their footsteps and write my own stuff and really, you know, jam out on the guitar with that. Let's do this. Oh, that's not what I wanted to put. What is it? Oh, I see. I was doing it. That started out rough, got better, and then got back to being rough again. Oh. But then got better at the end. That, yeah. I'm a firm believer in that if you just keep going and you're determined and you just keep going at it, you're gonna get it eventually. This is day one. <laughs> I'm getting better at recognizing the strings just by the feel on my fingers of how thin they are and like where they are in relation to my other fingers. That was, what the f was going on there? I worked on bending the string up it was just really hard to do. And the thing was, I was being way too aggressive with it. I'm sorry, I look like a feral beast when I play. I feel like the biggest, like, rockaholic out there. I'm just like, man, 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 man. I feel like I'm doing pretty well. Um, Aerosmith's Walk This Way is, is really challenging, um, and I'm not anywhere near 100% uh, difficulty. Oh, damn it. It's that same one every time. At first, I really didn't think that I was cut out for this. I did not think the guitar was an instrument for me at all. And then around week three or four, something happened. Everything clicked into place, and suddenly things were just coming so much easier to me. And I had this whole mental shift where I just said, I could be one of these people who knows how to play the guitar. Walk this way, you know, I'm just working on speed. Hopefully some lessons will help me out with that. So I'm looking to having that in like the next three to five days. The thing I like best about the 60 day challenge is that it forced me to keep going and it forced me to keep progressing. And, you know, when I was having my troubles in week one and two, and I, like, normally would have just stopped, given up, moved on to something else. But with the 60-day challenge, it pushed me. It pushed me further than I've ever gone with an instrument before. Next time I'm in a situation where I'm getting really frustrated and I want to just give up, just keep going, because odds are you can do it. Like, you can pretty much do anything if you just practice it enough. Hello, and now I'm over here. Uh, welcome back to the Rocksmith Developer Stream. Uh, this week we are looking at three songs from the Blues Song Pack number three. Uh, here to my right, Francois Luong. Welcome. 
Czesk, Doug. Do I and I do apologies <laughs> to any Polish viewers for oh. me massacring your own language, um, if that is the case. Guten Tag. I don't know. Good and tight, Doug. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, we are playing, and thank you for joining me on this one. Uh, we are going to play Ain't No Love. Let me try that again. Ain't No Love in the Heart of the City. I, I over enunciated that. Ain't No Love in the Heart of the City uh, by Bobby Blue Bland, uh, which I'm glad I got through that name. I'm proud of myself. Uh, so, how familiar are you? with this tune. Not very familiar, but it's an awesome song. It is. This is uh, so this is one of my this is one of my personal favorites and uh since I uh get to pick things, I sometimes choose for myself because I can. Uh <laughs> this is a, this is a really fun song uh on any path. Yes. In my opinion. Indeed. You've got you've the got some uh, really cool I'm chords. Playing the the lead path, mm -hmm. but it was really a 50-50 decision between the lead and rhythm path. So. Now what what made that decision difficult for you? Uh, I don't know, there's so many interesting things um, that you can do, such as fret mute. Um, the rhythm path also has uh, very interesting uh, legs um, um, that are also repeated in, in the lead path. Uh, yeah, I don't know, let's movement up and down the neck. All right, cool. Uh, and uh, I know uh, in the chat earlier, uh, Toy Machine SH uh, speculated that we might be playing Bright Lights by G Gary Clark Jr., which was another one that I had considered for this, but I actually played this with Elliot uh, <laughs> about a year and a half, two years ago. It's been a while, but um, so I, yeah, I wanted to ke keep, that, keep that special <laughs> where it was. Uh, but this is Ain't No Love in the Heart of the City by Bobby Blue Bland. Are we going to stand up at some point? What? <laughs> yeah, let's go. <laughs> Wait, I don't know what you're waiting on. <laughs> let's go. Wait, I mean, oh, you I want know. me to get stand up? I, I need to Again? Stop. I need to stop talking about the wheels of steel because they're going to cut my mic. <laughs>
fun tune. Yes. On everything. <laughs> um, so how how schooled are you in the blues? Ah, uh, I'm afraid that to say that I need more of an education in it. As do I. Okay. Yes. Well, uh, all I all I can really say is uh, this this is a really fun song. Yes. I, I have fun every time. It's one of my most uh, most played songs. That being said, I have to wonder why do you always make me play breakup songs and love songs? <laughs> I don't I don't I don't know if I make you play. I think that's just that's. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Is is there a reason? <laughs> <laughs> Should we be worried about one or both of us? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Um, no, thank you again for joining me. Uh, right now, we are going to take a look at some songs in case you missed it. Uh, so you may have surmised from the name of this pack, the Blues Song Pack 3, that there were uh, previous Blues Song Packs. If you guessed that, you would be absolutely correct. There have been, uh, in fact, two previous blues song packs, plus a, uh, a blues hits song pack and a blues rock song pack. Today we're going to look at uh, the blues song pack and the blues song pack two, or as I like to call them, blues one and two. Uh, the first blues song pack included the song you've just heard, Bobby Blue Bland with 811, The Heart of the City. Uh, also on that pack, uh, another Freddie King song with Hideaway, uh, Helen Wolf's Spoonful, John Lee Hooker's Boom Boom, uh, and Johnny Winter's Be Careful with a Fool. Uh, in Blue Song Pack 2, we had one bourbon, one scotch, one beer, uh, West Montgomery's monstrous West Coast Blues, and Willie Dixon's Backdoor Man. Uh, so if you're in the mood for blues, uh, check out those song packs. Uh, again, we've got the Blues Hit Song Pack and the uh, Blues Rock Song Pack, which will uh, you know, kind of uh, fill out the different, different avenues, the different uh, approaches you can take to blues. Uh, so please check those out. And uh, if there are some other blues songs that you're interested in uh, that we don't have, like maybe maybe you thought uh, we should have a different John Lee Hooker song, uh, hit up our request page. Just go to rocksmith.com slash song request and, uh, or follow the link that's probably being posted in chat right about now uh, and let us know what you'd like to hear. We use those requests to help us decide, to help guide us uh, on what songs to include in the future of Rocksmith. Uh, so yeah, check those songs out. Uh, check out the request page. And uh, if you're while you're on the internet, if you want to hit us up on Twitter or Instagram, we are at Rocksmith Game on both of those channels, just as we are uh, here on Twitch if you're watching or on YouTube if you're watching there. Uh, and we are also on Facebook. Just go to facebook.com slash Rocksmith if you want to hear uh, some of the news that we have uh, coming up. Uh, I mentioned earlier, I do have some news at the end of the stream about the next few streams and uh, some, some changes that might be happening just time-wise uh, with the scheduling. Uh, so uh, keep it, stick around for those uh, if you want to hear what's coming up. Uh, right now, I want to say hello to our final guests of the day, Andrew Levin. Hello. Actually, Ballad Christian. Hi. How's it Hello. going? Good. Good. Welcome. Uh, yeah. So this is the final song, mm -hmm. uh, and it's th I feel like this one's pretty important because of it's it's we're in San Francisco. Yeah, it's where, where I left my heart. It's where you left your heart, Wait, and it's what? where uh, well, it's easy <laughs> to leave it there <laughs> when on, you what? are <laughs> currently there. I left my heart there as well. No. Uh, well, by left it there, I mean I'm currently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's my heart. Heart. <laughs> I'm currently with my heart. Yeah, my heart is currently <laughs> in San Francisco. In San Francisco, technically. Uh, in a very literal sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. figurative. Well, yeah. It's very poetic. <laughs> sure. anyway. Yeah, it's very poetic, <laughs> and I'm trying to do my best for some reason to make it not be as poetic. That's a weird. That's a. That's You're doing a, a great job. What a Doug. terrible yeah. thing. They're doing <laughs> a fantastic yeah. job. Just break down uh, Just figure <laughs> of language, uh, brick by brick. Yeah. Uh, Akshay, Hi. how's it going? It's going good. Uh, I'm having trouble with my, with the correct headphone position. You wouldn't be the first. A, yeah. It's um, we'll figure it out. We'll get there. We'll get. There. We'll yeah, I wanted to say how much I enjoyed that last song. By the way, I'd never heard okay, it before. Okay, really? Oh my god! Yeah, I don't think I had heard it until uh, I, I I came into the Rocksmith fold. Man, myself. that's gonna be on my playlist. Uh, it's soon. Mm -hmm. it's yeah. really good. Um, I'm also this pack. It's uh, very good. Yeah. And the yeah. song that was mentioned earlier, "Bright Lights." Uh -huh. Gary Clark oh Jr. yeah, that's a great tune too. Great tune. Yeah, and, yeah. And, 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 and and he is one of the reasons I didn't go with that one is he's a bit more modern, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, is is cool. But just for this stream, I wanted to keep things kind of within the same. Uh, uh, range. Yeah, I mean, there's been like range. 40 years of evolution in the genre between yeah. when that song came out and when most of the songs in this pack came out, if if not more. No, I have actually I have a question about the last song, mm -hmm. um, about the genre that I that I see for the last song. Uh, you're pretty schooled in blues, right? Yeah, yeah. I and so. actually, I know you're you're. I like the blues. You like the blues. I, I like know you do a lot of funk. I'm no blues scholar. Okay. But, uh, so, yeah, so like uh, "Ain't No Love in the Heart of the City" was described to me as electric blues. Mm. Do you know what the difference is there? Or is that just hmm. 
so people adding adjectives to genres to well, distinguish them. It almost sounded more like a Motown tune to me. There was me definitely some like some R and B in there. There's, yeah, there's with all the string arrangements mm-hmm. and all of that. Um, uh, yeah, and also a chord from a chordal standpoint, it wasn't exactly a blues. It was kind of the 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 chorus was kind of a blues form. It was like an altered blues form, which yeah. I thought was really cool. Um, it was kind of a minor blues, but it never went to the five chord, which is uh, kind of rare. So that's unusual. Yeah. Okay. Uh, which is yeah, cool. I guess that w- yeah. Um, yeah. And then it when it went to the major section, uh, the verses that completely departed from the blues form, which is again kind of rare. But mm. yeah, I thought it was you know, really cool. Yeah. If I were to guess, electro blues would be more about the like equipment used like the for the recording, the, electric, the yeah, like yeah, instrumentation arrangements, right, and like the recording thing. process itself. Okay, It'd be yeah. like, ooh, it's a brand new electro future step, man. Like, like this is this is like you ain't never blues. seen blues like <laughs> this, man. <laughs> yeah. cool. Or or electro French electro house like Daft Punk or I'm Justice. <laughs> just mixed two steps I'm away. Pretty from sure. Daft Punk. <laughs> pretty sure this is what this that preceded Justice. <laughs> by a bit. I do like Justice though. No, no way, bro. No. So uh, yeah, you guys are playing Johnny Hooker. Uh, is this the this is the second or third John Lee Hooker song in the library? Uh, third. Dan says third. three. Dan says three. three. Cool. Yeah, I believe um, him. Yeah. San Francisco. Uh, yeah. What? So you know, track this one as well. Yeah. Uh, what should we look out for during this playthrough? Um, well, what is key. <laughs> That's a hard one. Uh, I mean. <laughs> Blues scale, ah. ben. <laughs> ben. the blues, <laughs> yeah. the blues, Ben's. Um, one thing I will say that is interesting about some of these old recordings um, is the. Um, and this isn't a bad thing. I don't mean this in a bad way. The tuner hadn't been because invented yet. Mm. Okay. Um, okay. And so. Actually, it makes it sound more harmonically rich when things are a little bit out of tune. It's actually yeah. a good thing. So you add some warmth. Mm. To exactly. It. If everything's perfectly mm. in tune, Softens it can the sound edges. yeah, it can sound really sterile. Um, because you tune to another instrument, right? Yeah. And so yeah. if everybody's off by just that little bit, but like yeah. you're, yeah. you're doing it all by ear. All yeah. by ear. Uh, actually, one that. of the big tricks in synthesis and sound design, like the first thing that I always do when I'm making a synth patch is detune the oscillators by like interesting several cents hmm. um because that gives it the kind of uh organic yeah it makes it sound like an analog especially if it's digital it sounds more analog but the reason i mentioned that is one of my jobs here is to make sure that the songs are in tune <laughs> and uh mm-hmm. this song um is literally yeah. impossible because the they're they're out of tune and in yeah. the context of the recording um uh, it sounds great, but yeah. in the context of playing it, like the rhythm guitar might be a little bit out. Mm. Uh, so at home, I apologize, but uh, <laughs> at the same time, there's really not anything I can I can do Just about with that with the yeah. with the confines of. Okay, yeah, that, makes, that checks out. Yeah. Um, so so use your ears. Use your ears. Yeah, use yeah. Ears. Totally this is a situation where, where ears can ears yeah. can help a lot. Uh, yeah. I do have one question before we uh, continue on with the song. Uh, this is another one from John 308. Uh, because uh, I'm curious, does anyone at the office play bar chords uh, the cowboy way, i.e., with a thumb over the sixth and fifth strings, like the old bluesman did? What? Oh, uh, um, I wouldn't say all the old guitar. bluesmen did that necessarily. Um, okay. But yeah, I mean, I, it depends on the I, depends on what I'm the playing. Song. But yeah. yeah, if I if I have to, then I will. You know. Yeah, because yeah. there are some, some styles, mm. some chords, some shapes that yeah. lend themselves to that more. It, totally. Even if people yell at you for doing it <laughs> yeah, no, on the internet or yeah. off the internet. Yeah, you <laughs> yell right back at that internet. <laughs> Doug, yeah, you right. show them. <laughs> I, I, I would say the older I get, the less I use that. Okay. Um, when I was younger and I, uh, I um, used to use it a lot and then I got yelled at. Sure, um, sure. I mean, it can be if, you, if, you're, if you're, I guess if you're leaning on it. Um, I don't know. I, it could be it could be developed into your style, but I guess there's uh, there is something to be said for uh, just in a, in a very precise uh, technique manner to 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 avoid that well when it's not necessary for the song. Well, here's the thing. Sure. It's, it's like it's meant to expand your reach, but it actually does the opposite. Mm-hmm. You know, so if you're playing in one box and you know this. There's nothing too wrong with it, but it, but basically what happens is if you bring your thumb up here, even locked. if you yeah, even if you have like mm. giant hands, like you're still gonna be kind of blocked in here. Right. Whereas if I move my hand down here, now all of a sudden I have this much right. reach, right? right? So um, I- you know there are times where maybe, especially in this kind of box, I may want to use it. 
What's that? That sounds good. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> no, continue, please. Yeah, so in this kind of box, if I'm kind of, uh, I, I may use it. Uh, I don't really ever, because cause as soon as I put, yeah, I guess the answer is I used to, but I don't yeah. anymore. Yeah, and there are songs, uh, if, you, if you've never seen this before, in Rocksmith, there are some songs that have the thumb indicated Yeah. Uh, in, in the, the UI. So it's just uh, instead of where you would normally see the one, two, three, four for your finger locations. And again, this is mostly for guitar because bass doesn't tend to have, they just use the anchor position yeah. uh, rather than showing the exact finger positions. Mm -hmm. uh, but on guitar, you'll occasionally see a T for yeah. the thumb when you're meant to use your thumb. Oh, yeah. interesting. Okay. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's not common, mm -hmm. but those, those songs exist. Yeah. Um, I think Pinball Wizard is one that comes to mind mm -hmm. that uses the thumb a lot. Yeah. But uh, this is not, not what we're playing. Oh, actually, yeah. Yes. Pinball <laughs> Wizard would be kind of tough to play without the thumb, now that I think about yeah, it. Yeah, try it. It's real hard. Yeah, because <laughs> you're playing this. Oh, sure. Right? And yeah, so yeah, that's yeah, yeah. actually physically impossible right, to play right. without a thumb. Right. Because, I mean, you could, but... You don't have enough fingers. <laughs> no, you could if you if you mute this string with your first finger. Sure. But that's... that's weird. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of weird. So that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. There you go. So, yeah, uh, yeah use it at your discretion, but... I guess try to learn to do without it when you can. Look, nothing Maybe. nothing is wrong. <laughs> if it sounds good to you, then it's fine. Like I, I don't like when people are, you sure. don't do it this way. It's like, you know, everybody's different. Everybody's got different body mechanics. Everybody's yep. got their thing. Nothing mm -hmm. is wrong. But, uh, you know, I mean, best practice is, I guess, to put your thumb down here. I, sure. It's what I do. Sure. But you know what? I... I'm not the arbiter of all things guitar, <laughs> so do you. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you very much for that. And let's go ahead and hear uh, Johnny Hooker's San Francisco. <laughs> that bass might be There's really loud. That, that might be. Your bass is pretty loud. And San Francisco I love my heart people And San Francisco High on the hill At the Golden Gate Across the bay And San Francisco On the hill No, that's what's going on Uh, so wow. again, we've, we have a similar <laughs> thing uh, at, the at the very beginning of the stream. Great job, both of you, by the oh, way. Oh, thanks. Uh, at the very beginning of the stream, uh, Brian, she was talking about how going down uh, had a very sort of, sort of call and response between mm -hmm. the, the vocals and the guitar. This has a little bit of that, where yeah. the call and response has a little bit more clipped, and then when the guitar is up front, 
uh, you tend to have long more bends, more sort of mm -hmm. uh, l longer notes. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, stylistically, we were talking about feel. Yeah. At that part of the stream, uh, and I would like to get your your take on that. Like, how how do you approach learning feel? Yeah. Which seems like an impossible <laughs> question. <laughs> yeah. No. I uh, no, it's it's not impossible. Uh, one thing that Shu talked about <coughs> earlier that I um, really subscribe to is to especially with the blues. Yeah. It's a very vocal uh, sound. So trying to emulate singers, maybe trying to learn sure. to sing a little bit yourself. Um, uh, for example, I mean, which also makes sense why it would be a call and response thing. You Absolutely. have a lot of blues players who sing and play guitar, mm -hmm. so they would sing a line and then subtly augment with guitar between lines. Yeah, one of BB King's things is that he refused to play lead guitar at the same time as he's singing. So if you listen to BB King, really, you'll pretty much. I mean, may, I, I could be wrong, but I, I, I'm pretty. Sh I don't think I am. <laughs> um, <laughs> that you'll uh, hear him uh, sing, and then he'll play some guitar fills. Um, sure. Uh, because it kind of fills in the blanks, as opposed to if you're, you know. Hmm. <laughs> While somebody's trying to sing, that's a really yeah. great way to get fired from a band. <laughs> so he'll yeah. take he'll take feel he'll take fills and he'll take solos. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. he's not playing a lot while singing. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. It's, it's the same with this mm. and with the Freddie King tune. Cool. Um, cool. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Akshay, that oh bass line. Boy. Oh boy. Oh <laughs> boy. It's it's a it's a it's a doozy. I, it really is. So I, I saw I saw you uh, trying to use your pinky. I really did. It's and then <laughs> sometimes you made the attempt, and I, I salute. I really I salute tried the attempt for but the like pinky. But like, it's use. also like you'll start at a note, and you want to use the pinky to reach the like the fourth. Yeah. Uh, and then, but you don't want to do that because <laughs> like the way that the the notes work out sometimes is that you start at the bass. Am, am I soft? I, I think that's soft. Wait, I think that is you. Is that wait, me? Wait, 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 wait. Turn it up. I'm up. Okay, yeah, that's okay. totally me. That was the okay. telly. <laughs> uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> so, like, you start on the fourth, and you want to go here. Yeah. And then up here. So but that, then, that. But then sometimes you want to go. You need that pinky. Well, when you hit the root note. Sure. You, wanna, you want that pinky free for, like, other variations of sure. that, like, walk. And so that's actually the toughest part. It's, like, st wanting to start on the middle finger and then moving up to your ring finger because your hand doesn't <laughs> just your hand does not stretch in that way sure. naturally I think but or it could just be that I need to practice more. <laughs> that well, yeah. be we'll the find case. out well the yeah, more you play the more flexible your hands get that's yeah, actually one sure. thing is a, a lot of people will say like oh my hands aren't big enough to play bass or mm. guitar and actually uh, you can have like really small hands and still be great bass player it's just um, stretching them out over time yeah right? exactly like it's just you get more flexible over just time lear learning how you physically need to approach the instrument. Yeah, Please. like check out Khaki King as a guitar player. Do you okay. know her? No. She is absolutely <laughs> applause amazing. Yeah, yeah. The audience is loving Khaki right King now. is like one of my favorite guitar players. Mm. Okay. She's like okay. four foot 11 and she her guitar is huge on her, but <laughs> she plays this huge acoustic guitar and does these crazy stretchy huh. chords. And yeah. I can guarantee you she's, you know, doesn't have giant hands. It's just that right. she's practiced a lot. And so mm. and then no, knows how to adjust her style, her play style to her Sort of physical. I don't even think so. I think okay. she's just stretched. She's just stretches. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. my, my fingers don't stretch in that way currently, but someday, yeah. someday, it'll get there. Cool. Um, yeah, it's fun. One thing I wanted to mention, yeah. real quick, with um, uh, playing uh, vocally, yeah, um, is that I think the thing that's tough about blues is um, you're playing all the notes in between the frets. It's not that right. you're playing the note and that's it. You're, it's there are. You're playing everything al al along the continuum. Yeah. Chromatically, like between the chromatic steps. Exactly. Exactly, and that's what makes it tough. Right. Right. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So it's it's a it's a different kind of precision. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Totally. Interesting. That's fine. Yeah. Well, thank you both very much for coming and playing. Uh, right now, we are going to have our final Ernie Ball giveaway for the day. Uh, so if you're in the chat still, uh, well, first off, thank you for hanging out. Uh, uh, good luck on this raffle. Please listen to what UB Jurassic is saying in the chat. Uh, that once more is Brian Turner. He is uh, the Rocksmith Community Manager based in North Carolina. Uh, if you win, you're going to get everything you see on the screen right now. You're going to get the six-string set. You're going to get a four-string set, uh, both regular slinky. Uh, you're going to get a dozen picks from Ernie Ball. You're going to get three picks from us here at Rocksmith. 
you are going to get a red Ernie Ball guitar strap, uh, some Wonder Wipes from Ernie Ball, as well as an Ernie Ball peg winder. Uh, so once more, please make sure you're following the channel because uh, you can't win if you're not following. And listen to UB Jurassic in the chat for your instructions on how you can win. If you win and you're out of the U.S., if you are not within the United States, uh, you, we still ship outside of the U.S., uh, but just please uh, make your address uh, easy for me to, to, to read and, and transcribe. So if you can break it up line by line so that I know your formatting, that helps me out a lot. A uh, few logistical things coming up. Uh, tomorrow morning, we will have uh, our clue for next week in the forms. Uh, so if you're curious about what's on the way, what kind of music uh, we might offer next week, uh, hit up the forms tomorrow. Just go to rocksmith.com uh, and click the link to the forms. Uh, and then around 10 a.m. Eastern time, uh, UB Jurassic is going to post a clue uh, that will indicate to you one of the songs that you'll hear next week. Uh, so hit up that. Uh, on Monday, we will have our encore stream. Uh, we, uh, we've talked a lot about tone today, and we will continue to do so on Monday uh, as we have the elements of tone uh, with two of our resident gearheads, Dan Emmerich and Brian Pody, discussing uh, what affects the tone of a guitar, how you can uh, uh, dial in and get the tone that you're looking for, especially helpful, possibly, if you're looking for a new guitar in the next couple of months. Uh, so that'll be Monday at 3 p.m. Pacific time, 6 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, next week's weekly stream, for whatever song pack that might be, uh, is going to be on Wednesday, because Thursday is Thanksgiving in the United States. Uh, so we're going to do our stream on Wednesday, same time as usual, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and I believe, oh, there's one more stream up coming up. Uh, in December, on December 9th, Monday, we will have our holiday stream for 2019. More information will be coming up on that, uh, including what prizes we might have for the end of the year. Uh, thanks again for coming by. Uh, I'm Doug Lilly, the host and community developer here at Rocksmith. I think we're going to take one more look at the Blues Song Pack 3, uh, and we'll see you next week.